SNI, Server Name Indication. This has become quite a buzzword in the last decade in the tech community. They all say, does it support SNI? Does this TLS version support SNI or in security solutions? How does it deal with SNI, etc., etc.? If the only thing you know about SNI is the opening of this abbreviation, then you are at the right place because in this video, we'll be looking at SNI to start with which problem it solves, why we have it, what are the latest trends in SNI, and how it's applicable to our day to day life or to the application applications that we either own or manage. To start with, let's go into very, very basics. Let's listen to a sort of to a tech story. Applications, the browsers and the servers, right? The users and the servers, they need to communicate with each other. They have this need. And in order to solve this problem, HTTP come into play. I have a wonderful video on HTTP. Don't forget to check it out. And that's how servers and users communicate with each other. However, then we have growth number of security concerns, cybersecurity attacks, be it man in the middle and tens of different attacks really. That's when HTTPS comes in into play, the secure version of HTTP. Then we again continue to live obviously and we need more security. We need cryptography, we need secure algorithms and that's how symmetric and asymmetric cryptography came into way. They enabled creation of TLS I have a wonderful video with detailed explanation of TLS Handshake. TLS Handshake uses the public and private certificates, asymmetric cryptography, in order to establish the handshake. And then it uses the symmetric cryptography. You might ask, why do I need these details? And the answer is you need to understand these details in order to see where SNI fits into this picture. During the TLS Handshake, we provide the user with the certificate of the server that the user is accessing to in order to validate that it is indeed the legitimate user. When we use cloud or when we have one server room, imagine I'm in the AWS cloud server room. One server might host different applications. When we create EC2 applications, we don't necessarily know that these applications are on standalone server, which is usually not the case because one web server is shared by different virtual images, virtual machines or the EC2 situs by different applications basically. So one server, physical server, can, can host jama.com, bing.com, k.com, c.com. These four applications, right? And these four applications, they are all isolated from each other, but they are on the same server. And the same server has one IP address. The IP address is one, two, three, four, right? We have one IP address and four applications. Now, as a user, I'm trying to access jama.com. I'm going to one, two, three, four. And then the server is like, okay, in TLS handshake, I need to serve this user with the certificate. But which certificate do I use? Which certificate do I serve it? If I serve it the common certificate, then this user will be able to access without TLS handshake bing.com, k.com, c.com. And this is not secure because the certificate should be related to one domain one IP address, right? And this is quite convoluted because jama.com can be owned by someone in India. Then bing.com is owned by someone in the UK, k.com in the US, c.com in Australia. So these companies, these application owners are not connected. They don't have anything in common. They shouldn't have the same certificates because that crosses out the whole point of security, the whole point of TLS, where you have a specific certificate for specific domain, right? Now, in order to differentiate them, we can have four public IP addresses for these applications. And that's how we solve the problem. I go to one, two, three, four for jama.com. I go to one, two, three, five for bing.com and etc. Etc. However, we have another problem waiting for us there. There is a limitation of IPv4 addresses. That's why we have IPv6 addresses, these long IP strings instead of IPv4. Because IPv4, there are only so much combinations, numerical combinations, and we are in need of extra IPv4 addresses. So having different IP addresses is not a solution to our problem. And that's where SNI comes into place. So we have two problems. Problems. We have many applications on the same server, on same server, 
we have limitation of IPv4 addresses, so we can't give public IP address to each application that is on the same server. And one physical server has one IPv4 address. So one physical server, one IPv4 address. We have these two problems. And SNI solves this problem. So SNI as itself is not a protocol. This is wrong saying that SNI is a protocol. No, this is, it's not a protocol. It's extension of TLS. This is an element of TLS that makes TLS better, that makes TLS usable in the current environment of cloud infrastructure. It's an extension of TLS and it mentions the host name. Host name equals website, the domain, right? That we want to uh, access. And it's cost efficient because we don't have to issue more IPVs. We can just mention the host name when we are accessing it. Before we go to the next, on the uh, high level, let's see how it goes. So I'm the browser and I'm uh, establishing TLS handshake. In my TLS handshake, I for SNI, right, the domain that I want to access, I put Bing. Dot com. During the TLS handshake, server knows which certificate to serve. It looks at the SNI and it's like, okay, she is trying to access Bing.com. Bing.com, certificate number two. Then the server serves you certificate number two. And that's how our problem is solved. With the SNI now, during the TLS, server knows which certificate to serve you. It's cost efficient, as we said, and it's scalable. So one physical server, imagine the earth. We have limited land resources on the earth. We have vast lands in some countries, but still 21% of the earth is land and 79% of the earth is sea actually, is ocean sea. I hope my statistical knowledge from my geography lessons is still up to date. We can't have physical server for every web application. So if I'm Jamila, I go and create thousand EC2 instances, a thousand virtual images in the cloud now, and buy thousand domains for those images. Can world really accommodate my whim of having thousand different physical servers just like this? And then in two minutes, I don't need them. And should they destroy these physical servers? What should they do? So this is not how it works. In the current world, one physical server can, can host several applications. These applications are isolated from each other, right? There is no security problem usually. However, they are still on the same server. As we said, the ACNI solves this problem, the security related problem related to certificates. And this allows us to scale faster. We can have one physical server and on that physical server, we can scale very fast because we can create more and more applications. For example, Google, very big physical server of Google can have maps.com. And then tomorrow Google decides to open a new application. For example, not YouTube, but Mutub and it tries to, to host this application on the same physical server. So it can scale with as many applications as it wants. Let's review it in more detail on the certain part of the TLS handshake. So if you want to see the full TLS handshake in detail, please check out my TLS related video. I only have sort of a certain fragment of the steps that we need. Imagine browser and server, they establish the uh, TCP connection, right? TCP connection established. Then the browser sends to server the client hello. This is by the way, this is TLS handshake. TLS handshake. Just to repeat for those who haven't watched my TLS video, TLS is the same as SSL handshake, but SSL has been deprecated. We're saying TLS. Browser sends client hello to the server. What client hello sends? Supported ciphers. So I support SHA this, I support MD5, etc, etc. It sends the random number. Random number is used further down the line in the TCP handshake and it sends the session ID the ID session that is generated when they establish the TCP connection. Usually, without SNI in the place, that would be it mostly, the client hello. However, with SNI, it also sends the SNI extension, SNI with the host name or domain. It's in interchangeable in this specific scenario. So it sends the bing.com as SNI that I'm trying to access this specific server. Server in server hello responds with selected cipher out of supported ciphers provided by the client with servers its own random number 
and with the same session ID to make sure that the session IDs fit the same so that there is no security concern, there is no eavesdropping. And the server returns SNI extension again, but now empty because we don't need an SNI from the server. It's client who sends an SNI. By the way, sometimes it's omitted, right? Sometimes servers don't send SNI. But most likely, I'm talking about the standard, right? Server sends the SNI extension, but it's usually empty. So that's how SNI on the lower level comes into play. That's how it's mentioned so that server knows further down the line in TLS uh, handshake, which certificate to serve. In this specific case, server source, serves Bing.com. You might have legitimate question. What if the browser doesn't support the SNI extension? So sometimes this novel approach is come into play. New version of TLS supports SNI extension, right? Where they send SNI. But what if the browser is of older version? So we don't usually upgrade our Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox, Safari browsers often. What if we didn't upgrade it and it's very old? In that case, if the SNI extension is not sent with the T TLS, meaning that browser doesn't support it, what does the server do? The server has the default certificate of the whole server, default, that it sends to the user so that user can access the server, one of the applications on this server. You might ask, what if then the bad actors will try to get the default certificates? Well, it will not happen because some uh, web applications don't allow older uh, version of browsers to access them. This is one thing. Another thing, servers still check the browser model. The browser of the version that doesn't support SNI, they serve the default certificate. However, if they see, imagine the bad actor is using the upgraded version of Safari, but it removes the SNI extension from the TLS. In which case the default certificate is not served because the server knows that there is something wrong going on because the browser version is up to date, but it it doesn't send the um, SNI extension. There is something wrong with it. So default certificate we discussed and encrypted SNI. In a very simple terms, as encrypted SNI, eSNI, is the encryption, is when the SNI extension in TLS Handshake is encrypted. It's very easy to understand, right? SNI extension encrypted, encrypted SNI. What I'm trying to explain is that why we need it. Sometimes when we establish TLS connections, eavesdroppers, bad actors, can track the SNI extensions. In that way, they will try to understand which websites we're accessing. So for example, if all these four websites are using the same IP address, how do we know Jama, this user, which website specifically she's trying to access? Is it kate.com? Is it c.com? Is it bing.com? Is it jama.com? Which one? When we try to establish the TLS, which one she tries to access the bad actor wonders? Uh, the way the bad actor can trace it is it looks at the SNI extension. So from SNI extension, and see that, okay, Jama accessed Bing.com. Then she must have an account in Bing.com. Then, etc., etc., etc. They might make their own conclusions. They can continue eavesdropping, etc. When we encrypt the SNI extension, the bad actors or the tracing, maybe organized cybercrime who traces what you're trying to do, for example, in censored governments, they can't see what we're, which website we're trying to access. And that's why encrypted SNI, eSNI for short, is very valuable nowadays because more and more companies trying to protect their users, uh, even in TL T TLS handshake, sorry, they are trying to protect their privacy. I hope this video was useful for you and uh, let me know in the comment section down below if you thought SNI is a different thing between my video, if it has made it more clear for you what this definition is and please provide me with your recommendations on my next tech videos. Thank you for being with me today and please don't forget to like and subscribe because YouTube has its own algorithm that is working in its own tempo. So please help me to please YouTube algorithm by uh, liking and subscribing to my channel. Have a nice day. Bye.